In my last video, I laid out a roadmap for how you can start modding KSP1 to make your own KSP2 after it was effectively cancelled for the foreseeable future. This is part 2 of how to make your own KSP2 with mods. For a recap of part 1, we covered how to install mods, getting awesome visuals, expanding the Kerbal system, new parts for surface colony bases and space stations, and some more good features and tools. In this video, we'll be covering near future tech parts, going interstellar with the Kakaobalo system, far future tech parts, and other star systems to explore, as well as some extra cool features. But first, there's a visual mod I forgot to mention in the last video called TUFX. This is a post-processing visual effects mod, which is essentially color and lighting filters or adjustments in your game um, on that front. It comes with some presets to try out, but most noticeably, it gives in-game lighting and glow a more realistic look. It's pretty good. Okay, near future technologies. So the stock tech tree ends um, pretty early compared to the kinds of technologies that are realistically feasible for us to reach in the near future. This mod adds some of those concepts in a stock-alike way to expand the tech tree past what comes with the stock game. It's made up of a bunch of smaller part mods all under the near future naming convention. It's made up of propulsion, spacecraft, electrical, launch vehicles, construction, solar, and aeronautics. They're all really good together. Um, but you don't have to get them all if you don't want to. I don't think I have near future launch vehicles installed for whatever reason, and it's fine. So try the ones you want. The engines in near future propulsion do need super high electricity to run though, so you're gonna wanna pair that with near future electrical for sure. Some of the more notable parts in this mod set are Vasmir plasma engines, magnetoplasma dynamic thrusters that run on lithium gas. It also has some more advanced hull effect ion engines and bigger argon tanks for those too. These kinds of engines need a ton of electricity, so they have nuclear reactor parts to generate enough power for them as well. This mod set also has a ton more structural parts, uh, like trusses and stuff. The near future spacecraft section includes a bunch more space capsules with more crew capacity and fully detailed internal views, which is really cool too. Near future exploration adds a ton of new probe cores and satellite parts, and near future aeronautics has even more powerful multi-mode engines like the stock rapier and even nuclear jet engines that have extremely high range. It also comes with more aviation related parts, I haven't really gotten my hands dirty with this one yet, but I've seen other players use the nuclear jet engines to fly through the clouds of gas giants and return to tell the tale, so it's pretty cool. Here's a craft from one of my videos, which is built with the near future magnetoplasma dynamic engine running on the lithium fuel tanks and a near future nuclear reactor in the middle. It also has a near future crew capsule on the end there. This engine is a low thrust but super high efficiency engine that can get uh, you up to delta V readings of like 36,000 or more. So it's a great successor to the Nerve, the stock Nerve uh, liquid fuel nuclear engine from the stock parts. Okay, I won't keep you guys waiting any longer. This is going interstellar. I got started with interstellar travel and KSP with the Cacaoblo system mod, and I'm glad that I did. This is probably the best and most iconic interstellar planet pack in KSP history to date. A wormhole connects the Kakaobalo system to the stock Kerbal system that's either orbiting Joule or Sarnus if you have the Outer Planets mod installed, which I covered in my previous video. Meaning you don't necessarily need uh, future technologies to start exploring the worlds of the Kakaobalo system. So it's actually multiple star systems, all orbiting a black hole at its center. It has super diverse locations, multiple different star types, multiple habitable planets, and even several planets orbiting super close to the black hole itself. It's got a really great skill curve with each system rising in difficulty and is a great playground to learn gravity assists and these future technology parts. Okay, so here's Kerbin inside the stock Kerbal system with Outer Planets mod and Minor Planets expansion installed from the previous video. And if we keep zooming out here in the tracking station, you can see the black hole icon for the Kikabalo system with its multiple star systems orbiting the center. If we zoom in here, we can see the local black hole system and the planets that orbit it. Further out, we have a brown dwarf system and its planets called the Maelg system. Next up is the Sun Orc system, which is a K-type orange dwarf main sequence star, just smaller and cooler than Kerbal. Uh, the wormhole that connects to the Kerbal system orbits a planet in this star system, making it the first star system that you'll encounter in the Kakaobalo system. Further from the black hole is the Aralk binary star system, with a blue hot main sequence star and a red dwarf, and the planets that orbit them. I've started my channel with a Kakaobalo playthrough series called Beyond the Wormhole, which is still ongoing, and I've learned a lot about the mod in the year that I've been working on it. Here's some tips for exploring these new star systems. First off, the wormhole will spit you out in the Sun Orc system. I've done missions to all of these planets and back to Kerbin with just stock parts. It's difficult, but easier if you utilize asteroid mining to refuel. You can find asteroids in the rings of the planet called Sarah and the rings of Sarnus on the Kerbal side of the wormhole. 
One of the planets here is habitable for Kerbals, but it's tidally locked to Sun Orc, with only one side of the planet facing the star at all times. Next in difficulty is the Arulk binary star system. This one is also possible to explore with only stock parts and technology, but asteroid refueling is pretty much necessary to do that. Near future tech parts would make this easier, um, but you can find asteroids in a thin asteroid belt between the planets Atpan and Aneta, and also in the rings of the latter. Um, there's a habitable moon that orbits the gas giant Aneta 2, which is cool. Third most difficult is the Maelg Brown Dwarf system. Near future tech parts or higher are basically required to reach this one and its two small planets. The most difficult are the planets that orbit close to the black hole. You will definitely need parts from the far future tech mod, which is the successor to the near future tech mod, I'll cover that in a second, to reach these planets as they sit deep within the gravity well of the black hole and require insane amounts of delta V. They're really cool though. Overall, the Cacablo system mod is really well made and is compatible with a great number of other mods. Outer Planets mod, Minor Planets expansion, EVE, Parallax, and True Volumetric Clouds. I will link to the visual configs for the last two in the video description. But yeah, this is definitely where you should start with interstellar exploration in modded KSP, in my opinion. To reach the most extreme locations of the Cacablo system, or star systems without a wormhole to connect them, you're going to need some even higher tech stuff than near future. That's where Far Future Technologies comes in. It's the sequel to Near Future Tech and comes with real life concept propulsion systems that may be possible in the far future. These are some of the engines that are included with the mod and they're all based in some sort of nuclear fusion, fission, or antimatter energy source and have high delta V capabilities. I recently began using some of these engines to my missions to the planets orbiting the black hole in the Kakabula system. This one is a mirror cell fusion engine. One thing you'll need to get with this mod though is the add-on called System Heat. This mod adds more advanced radiators and heat systems to manage the heat that these engines produce. Another mod that goes nicely with this one is Persistent Thrust, which allows you to use the non-physics time warp while burning. This is helpful because most of these engines, while efficient, have lower thrust outputs and interstellar burns can take days or weeks to complete and so you can fast forward through it with the non-physics time warp with persistent thrust. I haven't experimented with all the engines in Far Future yet, but Scott Manley has a video on this mod um, and goes through the real world concepts incorporated with these engines and has examples of craft he built with them to check out. It's always good stuff from Scott Manley. Also, my friend Javelin Shadow has some really comprehensive tutorials on the intricacies and in-depth details of each engine and their fuel types. I recommend checking those out on his channel as well. Outside of Cacablo, there are a bunch more star system mods to choose from and I will attempt to cover some of the most noteworthy up-to-date ones here. First off, we have Kerbal Star Systems 2. This is a reboot of the older Kerbal Star Systems and its first release came out this summer in the Aethera system. The mod page says that further star systems inside this mod are planned and will be part of an ongoing release basis, which is awesome. It's made by Starcrusher96, who is a really skilled and talented mod developer. I recommend checking out his channel as he has lots of cool development videos of his work in progress stuff. So the Aethera system is a red dwarf star system with six planets and is really high quality and well made. It also has a bunch of comets orbiting it which are cool. I checked it out when it came out and I was very impressed. I'm looking forward to playing it myself when my Cacavalo series is over. It also supports parallax and true volumetric clouds and is one of the most modern planet packs to be released for KSP-1. Next up we have Galaxies Unbound, a stellar odyssey. Now this one is one to look out for as it is still in development. Like Kerbal Star Systems 2, it had a previous release but is being rebooted and reworked at the moment. It's made by the same developer as the last one and he also posts work in progress footage on his channel that's really exciting. I haven't tried the previous outdated release of Galaxies Unbound, but there is a re-upload of it floating around somewhere if you guys want to try it. But I will be looking forward to the rebooted release that the creator is hard at work on. Going back to Kerbal Star Systems 2 though, the developer mentioned that the rebooted Kerbal Star Systems 2 is meant to be a successor that combines the best of both Kerbal Star Systems and Galaxies Unbound. So the rebooted Kerbal Star Systems 2 and Galaxies Unbound might eventually or currently be part of the same project. I'm not sure though. Just thought it was worth mentioning as I am a big fan of Star Crusher's work. Next we have the Other Worlds mod. This one is unique in that it adds a story progression to your exploration of these worlds. It adds a bunch of planets orbiting an orange dwarf. Also uniquely, this mod has its own website with an interactive map to look through and learn about the planets in this mod and it's really cool. It's compatible with Scatterer and Eve, but not true volumetric clouds at the moment, as well as some other planet packs, probably as long as their orbits don't interfere. This one's definitely worth checking out. Last for now is the Beyond Home mod. This one is also unique in that it replaces the stock Kerbal system in addition to adding an entirely new star system. The premise is is that in the future, Kerbal puffed up into a red giant and devoured the planets of the inner star system, 
and that the Kerbals were forced to relocate to the new Tempest star system and a new homeworld called Road. It adds a bunch of new planets in the Tempest system to explore as you restart your space program. You can even venture back to the old Kerbal system and see how everything turned out with Kerbal exploding and all. This mod is compatible with EVE, Scatterer, and Parallax 1.0. PSA though, installing this on an old save will mess it up most likely because it replaces the Kerbal system with a new version of it, so it might overwrite some stuff there. Here are some honorable mentions for other star system mods. These are all really cool, but unfortunately I was unable to get them to work right with the current releases of Scatterer and EVE as they are a little bit older, but they're still worth checking out. That brings us to the second part of the tools and features appendices. First, we have camera tools, which adds new camera functions to the game that a lot of creators use to get really awesome shots of their missions for cinematics and great looking gameplay. Next, we have Kerbal Constructs, which a lot of you have been recommending that I try out and is definitely now on my radar. The mod lets you place buildings that are included in the game files and other configs, allowing you to create bases on the moon and anywhere else. Going along with this one, we have Omega's stock alike structures, which adds to the selection of buildings that you can choose to build bases with in Kerbal Constructs. Another good one to go with this is the KSC Extended, which extends the KSC launch sites and Tundra Space Center, which adds a bunch of new launch site models. After those, we have Lights Out Relit, which essentially allows it to be nighttime in the VAB, which is useful for checking out how the lights on your craft work without having to launch it at night to test it. Another great thing about Kerbal Space Program 2 was its soundtrack. The mod Soundtrack Editor Forked for KSP1 allows you to create playlists with new tracks to add to the game, that are triggered by certain events. You can put whatever music you want on here. Some people have started putting together configs to port the KSB2 soundtrack over into KSB1 using this mod, and I will link to that in the description. There's also an indie composer on YouTube called Askarad who does fan-made KSB soundtracks that I'm a big fan of. You should check out his stuff too. And that's gonna be about it for this time, guys. Thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I wanna see more modded Kerbal Space Program content for me in the future. I hope you guys had a good experience trying out these mods to bring your KSP1 experience into the future and add hundreds more hours of exploration and fun to the game. Stay tuned, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks, guys.